to me, I see the collection kind of trying to become more like a, a strawberry plant in a way that we've got the main roots, but we also need to sprout into different places and then take develop a collection in each of those areas. Welcome to Sharing Our Marianist Stories. I'm Patty Garrett. And I'm Gabby Bebo. I'm pretty excited about today's podcast. We interviewed Teresa Tromboli and Brother Andrew Kosmowski, our two librarians at the NACMAS Library, and got the history of the NACMAS Library, hopes for the future, and a lot of other very good information. Uh, what did you think of the interview, Gabby? Well, I thought it was very interesting. I mean, I, I knew some of the things about the history of the library and the classification system, but I also enjoyed hearing them talk about the collection, like some of, you know, the rarer materials that are in the library, some of the really old materials that are in the library. I use the library quite a bit, and I think it is such a great resource that is underutilized or even people aren't aware of. But I'd like to know, this was this podcast was your idea, Patty, and you were the person who interviewed them. So what made you want to interview them? What do you think you learned from that? I learned a lot. You know, I've been at NACMAS for 18 years, and I thought I knew more about the library than I actually did. I really enjoyed hearing the history, how it started in Brother Larry Cada's home, basically. I was reminded that Teresa and Brother Andrew are professional librarians. What a gift that is to NACMAS. The reason I wanted to do this is we do promote programming a lot. We will promote new publications. But as Teresa said, the bedrock of NACMAS and Marianist Studies and ways to share the Marianist charism is our library. One more thing that I would add is they really would like the people in the Marianist family to contact them with research questions. Again, because their faces aren't always out there, I don't think people know they can go to them. So I'm sure we'll put that in our podcast notes, their email addresses, because they really, they know sources we would never even dream of. Was there anything that was new to you, Gabby? Because I know you are a big utilizer of the library. I knew some things about the library. I didn't realize that, like Teresa, that she called the Library of Congress to ask for their advice. And the person she talked to went to a Marianist school in Hawaii. I did not know that story. I thought that was very cool. One of the stories that I knew about with Teresa was her going to Father Furry and explaining to him how his classification system just didn't work. And she says in her response, and his response to her was like, change it, you know, change it. And that I was like, that's so free. Cause some, I've done a lot of study on Father Free, who was a very prominent Marianist scholar and wrote a lot about social justice. And he was very matter of fact and not super precious about his work. He would say like, if you have a better idea, please do it. I'll help you with it. That just sounded very much like him, like, you're the librarian. This isn't working. Change it. It's not going to hurt my feelings. It just shows you the passion and dedication that we have here at NACMAS and uh, willingness to, to speak your mind and be listened to. It's very Marianist, the whole thing, how the whole thing happened. Uh, so we really are a gem in the Marianist world. We encourage you, if you are creating a Marianist program, um, you know, if you work in a Marianist setting or if you are in a, in a Marianist lay community and you wonder, is there a resource about Father Chaminade and the Rosary or Marianists and social justice? You can email Teresa and Brother Andy and they can give you resources. And I know I've done that so many times and it's very helpful. And also, if you see a quote, that's attributed to one of the founders, they can tell you where that came from. 
what was the original source. So we hope you enjoyed this podcast. It encourages you to contact the library to find out what books are available, get more information about the past, present, and future of the NACMAS Library, which really, I think, is an indicator of the past, present, and future of the Marianas family. So listen in and feel free to contact us with any questions and read the show notes for other information. My name is Teresa Tremboli. I am uh, one of the librarians here at NACMAS. I'm Brother Andrew Kosmowski. I'm the other librarian here at NACMAS, and I started here in 2019. When did you start, Teresa? 1997. One reason I wanted to interview each of you is um, to the outside world, we get a lot of um, attention for our publications and we're always promoting programs. And I just would really like the Marianas family to get a little glimpse into what our library is. How did we describe the, the NACMAS Marianas Library? Uh, this is what we uh, wrote as a description. NACMAS has the best library of Marianist materials in North America. Our library contains Marianist materials in the languages in which they are or were published. So we have English, French, Spanish, Italian, German, Korean, Japanese, and even some various languages from India and Africa. And the only comparable libraries of Marianist materials, as far as we know, are found in Europe at the general administration in Rome and in the library gathered by uh, Father Eduardo Benyoc uh, in Spain. Thank you. So I'm wondering, how did the library start? Well, NACMAS at the very beginning didn't have permanent offices. So it moved around from, from um, Marianist community to Marianist community, wherever the director uh, was assigned that uh, particular year. And at one time, Larry Cada, I think it was 1988, was the director. And he lived at Terrace Avenue in Cincinnati. And it was the Terrace Avenue Community Library that Larry was instrumental among those that were probably more than one person, was instrumental in putting together that became the core of the NACMAS Library. Thank you. Well, where was the library when you started working? Uh, it was... Um, in the um, area where the Marianist Mission is now. And uh, we, at that time, we had maybe half of what we have now. Is this where you want me to get into the classification yes. schedule? Yes, I was, that was my next question. Like we absolutely have to talk about the classification system that you developed. Well, when I first came to NACMAS, one of the first things that was asked of me, both by Carol Ramey, who was the director at that time, and Larry, was we need to get the collection organized and classified, cataloged, so that people can find the materials more easily. In the beginning, what was being used was a, a classification scheme schedules that were compiled by Father Faree. Now, Father Faree put that put those schedules together for his own private use because he wanted a way of organizing and his own personal library of Marianist materials. That classification scheme was based on the Dewey Decimal Scheme. Dewey Decimal uh, is inadequate for a research library, especially since uh, 
Paris schedules were static. They were static from the 19 in the, I think it was in the 1920s. So one day I happened to be in Dayton, Ohio, and I made an appointment with Father Faree, and I took his schedules with me, uh, and I spoke with him. He sat there to my right, and I opened the book, and I went through every page, and I asked him questions about everything that he did, and I told him the temerity. I told him, this isn't working, Father. And so um, at the end of it, he said, threw up his hands just like that. And he said, do whatever you want. Change it. Do whatever you want. He was very kind to me, very kind to me. And yes, he did say at the end, do whatever you want. Change it. You know, you do what you want with it. But he said it with um, with a smile, I think, if I remember correctly. So with that permission, I started over. Uh, I did research and how schedules are put together. And I finally put in a cold call to the Library of Congress. And I forget his name right now, but uh, this person from the Library of Congress, he happened to be the head of the cataloging division. He happened to be a student of Brother Richard Resch, who had lived and been in a librarian in Hawaii. So he already knew the Marianists, and he was a cataloger. Basically, he said, use the Library of Congress basic, basic setup and put in the categories that you want. So that's what I did. And I, it took me quite a while. I enlisted the help of anybody who would listen to me, you know, uh, uh, professional catalogers that were not Marianist, Marianist people who knew uh, the Marianists and the charism. So as a result of all that, we ended up with subject headings that are specifically for Marianist works. And those subject headings have been adopted by the Library of Congress as one of their um, um, lists of, of subject headings that can officially be used. That is huge in, in, library, in the library world. This may be a very unique set of schedules for cataloging a special library. Now, Andy, I'm going to jump in right now, Teresa, yeah. because this has been something that yeah. I've been researching on my own. Yes. Um, I think in terms of it being unique, I don't think there are many other religious classification systems that are standalone that are regularly being used. Like I know that the Franciscans had one in the past, the Benedictines had one in the past, but they're kind of diminishing. So it's one of the unique places in my encountering of theological librarianship. But we're now going down library jargon weed land here. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think that's really interesting. I really appreciate that history because I've heard bits and pieces and it's just nice to hear the whole story. So, so as kind of fun facts, what is the oldest publication that we have? One of the more interesting rare books that we have is written in English, published in Ireland in 1795-ish on the state of the French clergy after the French Revolution. Some people might be interested in knowing what are some of our statistics are. We have cataloged on, on our shelves or in process of being put on our shelves over 11,000 items. If listeners want to know what's in the library, what should they do? So they should first go to the NACMA's website. Always a good place to start. They would see the 
the reddish orangish rust colored bar with library as one of the words. If they then hover over library, they'll come to the catalog. Um, the best option from where it lands is to click on search with the magnifying glass and then type in type in words and see what comes up. It's we want people to know that this is also a would we say reference library. So if you have a question, we do have librarians, Brother Andrew and Teresa on staff that can answer your questions. So I would suggest first with the reference question, send it either to Teresa or me, or we could or send it to the NACMA's general mailbox. And Lauren is very good at forwarding those on to Teresa and me. Just so that way we can really help you precisely know what you're looking for. Because maybe you're looking for an episode in like Adele's life. It's like I have this vague recollection of da da da. Am I making this up or is this real? Or, or maybe you're you're just doing a little research on what were some of the Marinus publications like? Um, can I contrast the letters? Um, things like that. Sometimes if it's in the depository, we will gladly send it on to you for just shipping cost. But just remembering that we're here to help you first. And you might think, oh, but Brother Andrew's busy cataloging. He can't help. No, my job is the reference first. Yes. Thank you. That's another reason I wanted to spotlight the library because we have a wealth of books, but we have a wealth of knowledge and two people that can get a lot of information that you're probably looking for faster than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So. We want that out there. And, and that we will put your emails in our podcast notes. Uh, you know, I know you can find it other on the website, but we'll definitely put it in the podcast notes. Andrew, I was going to ask, you know, your hopes for the future of the library. I think you addressed that early on. Do you have anything to add to that? Some places that I can see future growth in would be better understanding the context of our Spanish martyrs. Um, I think having, since the novitiate offers the, the program for the region of Korea, gaining more materials in those areas, but in Korean, um, that would be a, a helpful thread. Um, maybe some items on the Catholic experience in India. I think for me, it's not just where our roots are. To me, I see the collection kind of trying to become more like a, a strawberry plant in a way that we've got the main roots, but we also need to sprout into different places and then take develop a collection in each of those areas. In my head, so this would very much be a, please contact me before doing this. Um, trying to work with the lay communities for their materials. Canon law requires the orders to keep archives, but the same expect the same requirement is not there for lay associations of the faithful, such as Marion's lay communities. So they might end up just sitting in boxes here for a while. <laughs> um, but at least it's someplace to maybe think about housing the materials. I just want to thank you for your time. Um, you know, the library is uh, it's the first thing you see when you walk in. People always seem taken aback with the materials that are there. Again, we highlight other parts of NACMIS. It's, it's easier to highlight other parts of NACMIS. You know, we can't always say, here's the library. <laughs> but I really wanted to put a spotlight on it for people to know it's um, it's the backbone for research. Bedrock. But wait, it's bedrock. That's a better word. It's the bedrock of Marianist studies, past and present. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sharing Our Marianist Stories. As we said at the beginning of the podcast, you are welcome to submit any reference questions that you might have 
to Brother Andrew or to Teresa, and we'll put their emails and the show information for this episode. And as always, we invite you to go to our website to see all of the programs that we have being offered right now, to sign up for our newsletter, and of course, to view the library catalog. So you can go to our website at nacms.org. That's N-A-C-M-S dot org. Thanks again for listening.